this is a Fuller and Johnson Model N, one and a half horsepower, made in 1917. In this video, I'll explain how a hit and miss engine works. The term hit and miss means that an engine either fires or doesn't fire based on a predetermined average engine govern speed. The four stroke hit and miss engine differs from a two stroke hit and miss engine and again differs from a throw govern engine. When this engine is missing, it's due to the exhaust valve being held open. When the exhaust valve is held open, the engine lacks both compression and intake vacuum. When there's no intake vacuum, fuel can't be drawn into the cylinder to fire or hit, as it's termed. Also, when it's missing, it's also not generated a spark to ignite the fuel vapor. This is the igniter. This igniter generates a spark by using a battery and coil. Some igniters generate spark by way of a low tension magneto. The spark is generated at the igniter points, which reside inside the combustion chamber. When the points are closed, electricity flows in series through the battery, coil and points. When the points are open by way of the trip mechanism, the collapsing field generates a spark between the opening point gap. Here's the speed governor latch out. When it's latched, it's not allowing the push rod to contact the cam to enable the exhaust valve to close and in turn also not trip the igniter or allow the intake valve to draw in fuel. From this angle you can see the governor eccentric, the cam, the cam gear, crank gear and the latching assembly which is latched or unlatched by way of the movement of the governor eccentric. You can also see the push rod roller at times following along the cam. The cam is part of a large intricate system that controls the spark and fuel timing. It directly allows the movement of the push rod. Here is a view of the latching arm and the governor eccentric. This is the speed governor flyball, which is directly linked to the governor eccentric and moves by way of centrifugal force. The flyball movement resistance can be adjusted to increase or decrease the average engine operating RPM. This is an open crank engine, which means that lubrication has to take place by means of a cylinder drip oiler and crankshaft and connecting rod grease cups. It also means that by default, grit and other contaminants can find their way into wear surfaces easily. Because of this, frequent cleanup is required to increase engine life. This is a good view of the flywheels which store energy on the combustion stroke and supply stored energy on the other three strokes of the piston. You can also see the water hopper well, which is a hollowed space surrounding the piston cylinder and combustion chamber, which is filled with water to provide engine cooling. When the exhaust valve on the left is allowed to close, the vacuum created by the piston pulls open the intake valve, which is on the right. The intake valve is held closed with a fairly light spring and isn't actuated by means of a mechanical arm, but rather through atmospheric pressure. When it's opened, air is sucked into the mixer, which on this engine looks similar to a black spigot. The mixer has only one moving part, and that is a needle valve. The needle valve is a fuel metering device that sits in a venturi and can be adjusted to allow more or less fuel to enter the mixer by way of Bernoulli's principle. <laughs> 